Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, for those of you who are new, this is my 1979 John Deere 214. Uh, this is the one that I got in a previous video. I traded my 110 for it. The one that I built, uh, this tractor, we pulled the, in the last video, the variator idler that tensions the belt for the variator was bouncing around like crazy. I ended up swapping that rear belt and got that problem to go away. I also put a choke cable on it. The carburetor on this tractor is wore out. I've tried mowing with this tractor. I tried mowing with it again after the camera was turned off and that motor, I'm not sure if the engine needs to be broken in again from setting or if the rings are shot Judging by what I've seen on this tractor, I think that motor might just be a little wore out. Uh, coming around here, the variator on this tractor has some issues. The variator, the sleeve on the variator is loose. You guys can hear it in the videos when I run the tractor. You can hear the sleeve, you can hear the variator. So it definitely needs some help. It also doesn't quite work right. It shakes around quite a bit, which I'm thinking it might be caused by the uh, drive belt up here not being the factory drive belt, as well as I found this the other day. If you come around to this side, as you can see, somebody put a brand new uh, rubber up here. So that definitely shouldn't be causing the problem at all, but I think it is. So let's go on ahead and let's see if we can get this thing figured out. I think today we are going to try to replace that rear belt. And if that doesn't work, we're just gonna pull the variator out. It's not hard to pull the variator out. There's two linkages and a belt. There's a linkage up top right there underneath the battery tray you unhook from the lever and it goes down to the variator and then there's another linkage goes to the clutch pedal and then there's a spring that hooks up to it goes back to the frame for your and it goes to a little tensioner then once you remove that and the belt you should be ready to drop your variator as well as the bolt right there so yeah so let me go on ahead and get you guys into the big camera i'm filming on my phone right now because the phone's a lot lighter and uh, a lot easier to carry around than the camera. So let me get you guys set up, and once I do that, we will get into this thing. I had somebody ask me if I could take the belt that came off of this tractor and put it next to one of my other John Deere belts and see just how much bigger or how much smaller it is than one of these other John Deere belts. Take a look at this one. This one is a John Deere belt. This is a little bit thinner. And as you can see, this is the belt off of this 214. That looks a lot thicker. But uh, let's take the two. And as you can see, this back belt is the one that came off. This front belt is the one that would be a correct John Deere belt. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Let me grab another one from my little thing over here just to make sure that that... Uh, just to make sure that I have a, you know, a correct... Now, let's try this again. Okay, that's odd. So I guess none of these are the same size. <laughs> um, but this belt seems a little tighter. Actually, yeah. this belt in the back is tighter than the belt in the front again, as you guys. So let's get this uh, PTO chain or not PTO. Let's get this belt changed this front drive belt and let's see if it helps anything at all. I really doubt it will, but you never know. Clutch looks good. Well, you know what I just 
just realized something. We're going to have to take this off in order to change that. Bear with me, I've never done this on a manual PTO. I didn't even think about that until just now. So let me get that changed real fast. One of these sockets is not like the other. One will fit and one won't. Which one won't? Happen. I was thinking it would have been a 916. off of here it should come around that if I'm correct. Okay. I see how it works now. So now I need to remove the rear belt is the rear yeah. The rear belt is in front, therefore it has to come out first. You guys should know how to get the belt off of the pulley. Right now I'm just getting it off. There we go. So now I'm going to engage the parking brake so it loosens that belt. When you engage the parking brake, it tightens the rear belt and loosens the front belt. So, Episode of things to get angry about that really shouldn't be that hard to do. We're going to get pissed off at a belt because this belt doesn't want to come off of this pulley like it should. Um, itch. You know, there's not a keeper <laughs> under that, is there? I can't even remember. What's your issue? Sometimes you just gotta get personal with these things. You gotta teach them your thoughts. I'm looking for the card, but I don't. What is this? That's not it. What is it? Do this. Let's flip it around. Man, I'm getting sick of shit falling in my face. Ooh. Wow, I'm looking at how much slop this variator has in it. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go on ahead and replace it since both belts are off of it right now. I think that would be my best bet. You guys will see it once I get the variator out. It's bad. 
It's really bad. There we go. So let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this belt. I don't think this front belt really posed any issues. But you never know what could have. They both feel about the same. This actually might be a little bit shorter, this belt, than this belt. Hmm. Yeah, maybe they're about the same. Maybe tell. So I'm going to go on ahead and just replace that variator. I know you guys won't be able to see very well what I do. I'm going to have to take that battery tray out in order to get to it. Oh, that's right. Somebody put... They put a 100 series battery tray in here. I forgot about that. Great. <laughs> well, that's going to be interesting to try to get out of there. It shouldn't be too hard. Although I wasn't the one that shoved it in there. I guess we'll have to see just how how it comes out. It's not it doesn't look too bad. If I do end up taking that out of there, I'm going to swap it for the 200 series one. The only ones that have 100 series battery trays are the 1 and 300 series. Let's see if we can get this out of here. I don't know what you guys can see. I do apologize about that. There's a linkage back here, and this linkage right here is the one that I want to remove if I can get it quit fucking with me and just come out please I've had enough Be ready for a massive headache. Where's it at? Can I get it? There it is. Where are you? There you are. Got it. <laughs> Stick it back here. There was a washer that fell. I think, yep, it came out, so I can do that all I want now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were able to see it or not. Unfortunately, I don't really think that it showed up very well on camera. I'll have to lighten it up, I guess, depending on how it looks. After I lighten it up, there's one more linkage down underneath that I need to remove. Uh, if you go underneath the tractor, you should be able to see what it looks like. There's a spring that goes to the back. It hooks up to the variator. The spring goes back. That's where it hooks up to. Uh, it's not really that hard to take out of there. I'll get a picture of it, and I'll put it in the video. Or maybe I'll set my phone up down there and film it while I take it out. I guess we'll see. Let me get things set up. I'm going to go under there and get that linkage out. And after I do that, I'm going to get the variator out. So I've got this 214 up here. I don't quite have it up on a lift. I just have it sitting. I have a couple of these little ramps that I have here around the shop. Uh, the thing that you're going to remove is this right here. This is hooked up to the variator, which is over here. And you're going to remove this. There's a cutter pin or a clevis pin over here, as you all can see. I'm gonna remove that, and once I remove that, this pin will come out. I actually made this bracket right here to hold the spring because it didn't have a bracket here to hold the spring. So I made that. And, uh, but that needs to come out. This needs to come off. Look at this. It's a hula hoop dancer. <laughs> See? probably has absolutely nothing to do with why my variator was shaking though I mean that definitely wouldn't
cause it to do that or anything like that, but I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to remove this pin right here. I don't know if I'll be able to set you guys up so that you'll be able to see it. You'll give me some light while I try to do it. But uh, let me see if I can actually, you know, well, it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, it does have something to do with it. Because I have the I have the pedal press. So that it doesn't roll while I have it up here on blocks. I'll put it in gear, but putting it in gear really isn't gonna help any at all. I don't really have anything I can put behind it, so we're kinda of screwed if something ends up going wrong. Oh, damn it. That's sitting on that belt. How's that? Is that better? <clears throat> Let's see if we can get this. Let's see if we can get this thing to move, which it looks like it. Yes, it did. And we'll just go in here. Something's going to happen, and I know it. That is why I am under here with absolutely nothing holding this tractor back. There we go. No brakes. No nothing. There we go. And uh, for whatever reason, this doesn't want to let go. Come on, let go. There we go. We got it. So now, the variator should just about be ready to come out. But I guess we'll see. So let me get this, let me get back up here. I can't engage the brake anymore because this isn't hooked up to nothing. So I don't have brakes. That's great. We'll get the variator out. And uh, once we get the variator out, it, it should do that. That's factory. And uh, once we do that, we should be ready to uh, get the new variator in there. I'll bring you back. May I ask you what you're doing over here today? I'm over here filming John, filming a video on his 214. Oh really? How weird. That's what I was just doing, filming John working on his 214. Uh, are you trying to steal my job or something? No, actually, I'm not trying to steal your job. I'm trying to do what I'm being told to do by my owner. Yeah, well, guess what? I was here first. You're not even a real camera. You're just a phone. How dare you make fun of what I am? That's what you get for making fun of me, you son of a bitch! So now what we need to do is we need to come over here, remove this bolt right here. That should be the last thing holding that track, the variator in. If I remember right, it's been a little bit since I've actually removed a variator from a tractor, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. But let me get that bolt out of there. I think that bolt should be 5 eighths. It should be 5 eighths or 9, actually I think it's 5 eighths. So let me get that bolt out of there and once I do that, I'll bring you guys back. So I grabbed a 3 fourths just because that looks bigger than a, that looks a little bit bigger than 5 eighths. Oh wow, sure enough, that was it. Let's see if we can get this out. This one right here removes it. This one right here, if you uh, loosen it, and that's how you adjust your variator. I will do that when I get it back together and I'll show you guys how to do it. There we go. So now, there shouldn't be anything holding this in. What I'm doing, never mind. What I was trying to do is keep it turning, and as I was turning it, pull back slowly, hoping that the bolt would come out with the, or just that the bolt would come out. But yeah, that went pretty well. That came out nice. So I think, if I'm correct, let me grab another variator. But yeah, I think look at this variator. Just look at this. That it, it's brand new. I just got that from the factory. Did you know that? <laughs> a little bit of an update on this 214. It's been a little while. Uh, a few things I did. 
I ended up putting the variator back on and getting everything set back up. I did that off camera. It's not that hard to set that stuff back up. It just about goes back together the exact same way it came apart, just reverse. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the motor over. I'm going to start it, make sure that uh, everything works good. I haven't adjusted the variator yet. I'll do that here later. I'm just going to move that back. You want it two notches from the front and five notches from the back, which puts it about right there when you adjust the variator. So I'm going to go on ahead and start the tractor up. And let's see. I also bolted the fender pan down. I need to fix this seat. So let's get this thing to start. If it'll start. And uh, we'll let it go. I put two new belts on it. Not new, I just put old belts on it and we'll see what happens. Ready? I did order a new carb for it, by the way. But yeah, as you guys can see, now that I've changed that variator, clutch pedal's not bouncing around no more like it used to. adjusted it yet but it does work let's take it outside it's raining right now but oh well let's take it outside drive it up and down the driveway and see how it does
the engine mount. Other than that though, it does pretty good. I'm impressed. Overall, I would say it has definitely improved when it comes to driving. Engine wise, it definitely needs, I think that motor is going to need to be rebuilt. So here's my thought as to why the tractor was parked, what my thought is. At some, I'm guessing uh, whoever originally owned it used it and uh, they probably, it is original paint, it's a really nice tractor. My thought is maybe somebody, they kept it inside and uh, when they took it out and used it, they kind of abused it a little bit and then they'd take it and park it inside the uh, barn or garage which kept the tractor looking nice overall and uh, I guess just over the course of using it and using it and using it you gotta remember the tractor is over 40 over 40 something years old and uh, you know over the course of time things do tend to wear out for example the variator as you guys saw it was pretty well wore out so yeah but um yeah it was it was definitely a need for some help my thought is maybe somebody parked it because the tractors it's pretty well wore out it burns a lot of oil plus the variator was wore out like it was i don't think the belt problem had anything to do with it but you never know uh, because that belt was swapped onto there by uh, shane before i got it but yeah my thought is, I bet you I probably could have run it just fine with the belts that were on the tractor. But, you know, uh, with that wore out variator like it was and the thing bouncing around it, I couldn't leave it like that. I had to change the belts. As you guys saw, though, once I swapped that variator out, it did pretty well. Variator works really well. Uh, definitely improved the tractor by a lot. I think this 214 is a keeper. I ordered a carburetor for it. So hopefully, here soon, I will have that carb to throw on here and maybe use this thing a little bit. Never had a 214 before. I have just about the entire 200 series, all except for a 200. I'm not really looking for a 200 at the moment, but if I stumble across one dirt cheap or just can't, one that I find that I just can't pass up, I probably will. But I guess we'll see. I think what I want to do now, since I still have the camera out and still going, I want to take a look at this engine mount over here where this rubber is. It has uh, committed suicide and it needs to be looked into. But yeah, other than, the, other than the variator, everything on this tractor is fine. Everything works. So I'm going to let the tractor cool down for a little while and I want to look into that engine mount. So yeah, we'll do that in this video as well. One other thing that I need to address on this tractor, I noticed it. It really hasn't bothered me much, but it is starting to. Take a look at that uh, front tire. See what uh, spindle type it has. Now let's come over here. Take a look at this spindle over here. And uh, tell me what's different about it. I'm sure you'll be able to notice it right away. So that needs to be changed. Um, and then the engine mount, like I said, I'm probably going to leave the spindles alone. I might mess with it later. I might not. I guess we'll see. It's just a matter of how long is it going to take for me to get sick of them. So yeah. I can't think of exactly where I ended this uh, last time you guys were here. I've done some work off camera on this tractor. I think if I'm correct, the last time that you guys were here, I was ordering a new carb for this tractor and also last time you guys were here I didn't have this tractor uh, stay tuned for that video <laughs> um, I think if I remember right I uh, ended the video ended off last time we were at um, I was getting a new carb for it because the carb that was on this tractor was wore out I ended up ordering another carb. It was one of those Chinese knockoffs. Um, I just said, well, it's cheap. I'll order it. We'll see where it goes. I stuck it on here. I could not get the engine to run right. The tractor had all sorts of fits. It would run like it was choked out. I was starting to wonder if that carb was for a 10 and 12 horse. I also noticed the jets did not want to thread on that as well as the front bolt holes that hold the air filter assembly on were starting to strip. 
after I took the bolts out of the other carb and stuck them in that one. So I sent the damn thing back. I said, I'm done with this shit. And uh, I sent it back, got my money back, and ordered another carb from another brand that I often order from. If you're looking for a carb for a Kohler K-Series, I have a brand that I highly recommend. I have been ordering this, these people for, oh God, I want to say now, a couple years. And uh, I've never really had any issues with their carbs that I get from them. Uh, they have good gaskets. They come with both uh, choke levers. They come with this choke lever. And they also come with the correct one for a 200 series. Um, I'm not one to give shout outs. I'm not sponsored by these people in any way, shape, or form. I wish that I was. But... As far as I know, their stuff is made in America. It's not Chinese crap made out of Chineseium that uh, the threads strip out of if you try to thread a bolt into it. And also their jets move nice. They also sent a, uh, I have a feeling they knew who I was when I ordered <laughs> from them. They sent me a chart for uh, tuning a carb, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I've actually never had that before when I've ordered from that company. I don't know if they just started doing that or if they saw who was ordering it and said, you know, I know who that person is. And they threw the chart in and sent it with it. And it comes, they come with fuel line. They come with a, uh, a fuel filter. They come with all the gaskets. They come with extra gaskets. They even come with the spacer gasket the gasket that moves the carb up forward, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, really like I threw that carb on here after I sent the Chinese M1 back and it's been working just fine ever since I put it on here. One of the things that we need to do with this tractor still, a couple things we need to do is Shane made a request, the guy that I bought this tractor off of, he said that I should throw the old belts back on it, the ones that he put on there that weren't John Deere belts that I said looked like they were a little bit smaller than the actual John Deere belts. Uh, we should throw them on there and we should see if since it has a new variator on it, if these belts will work or not with the tractor. So I think that's what we're gonna do next. I wanna fix a couple things on the tractor first First thing I want to do is get that variator adjusted because I haven't adjusted the variator yet. If you pull the variator back lever, lever back all the way, it stops moving, which it shouldn't do. That should slow it down. So, which isn't bad, you know. It's not bad that it stops there. It's kind of nice, but I'd rather have it the way it's supposed to be. And then there's also a rubber up here in the front that I need to replace because well, that rubber has seen better days. So I think that's what we're gonna do next. I am not sure if I'm gonna, I might replace the belts later. Let's get the variator adjusted and let's get that rubber fixed. And after I do that, we will get into that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your variator at the second notch from the front and fifth notch from the back. And after you do that, this hole right here has the bolt in it you want to loosen and then after you loosen that you want to spin the engine over until your clutch pedal is uh, straight up. What I mean by straight up is it's not moving anymore until it stops moving. I should say that instead actually. And then once it's to that point, tighten this back up, start the engine, pull your variator back. If the variator, if the tractor still moves, still drives with the variator back all the way, well then that means your variator is adjusted right. There it is. It is a three-fourth socket. I believe that's quarter inch. Let me crank this until my pedal stops moving. Looks like it kept moving a little. Bit. Stop. And then once 
your pedal stops moving. Tighten that up. Tight. You want it tight. That way it doesn't move. And then after you do that, put your uh, spark plug wire back on. And there you go. The reason they want you to unplug the spark plug when you're doing that, I have no idea why. I'm guessing it's so that doesn't spin too fast and so the engine doesn't vibrate causing that to mess up. That's kind of what I'm thinking it is. So yeah, there you go. Uh, that is how you adjust your variator. Now let me get the front grill off and let the engine cool down some and we'll do that rubber. Now I know for a fact I've done this on camera before. This right here is my rubber. This is where it is. And as you guys can see, it's falling apart. So we gotta replace that. I feel like I've made a video doing this before. I know I have, it was on my T16. Uh, let me grab something to lift the front of that up with. So basically these are rubber isolators. Their job is to make the uh, tractor shake less because these case series do shake a lot and their job is to make the engine able to shake without shaking the tractor a whole bunch. My personal opinion is I don't think they work too well because the tractor still does shake quite a bit but they're there so I guess you just gotta live with them. It ain't a bad idea though they put them there. There we go. That'll keep that up for a bit. And then I want to loosen this right here. Maybe this will make you guys see a little bit better. I take the air filter off. Make you guys see a little bit better and make it easier on me. Let's uh, get started to. There it goes. Then I'll probably end up just keeping that bolt. Depending if it wants to come out, which it does. You all ready to see the rubber? Oh my. <laughs> it definitely fell apart. So yeah, that ain't no good. It looks like the mount might still be there, which if it is, that's good. So I want to grab a wash, couple of wash. This nut that I have will be big enough, or this bolt that I have will be big enough to hold that. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need more of a, I need more of a spacer under that. Now that I think about it, because I want that to be level. Maybe that'll work. I need to get something in there and get all that rubber out. Actually, that should be the next thing that I do. As tempted as I am to move you guys over here, I don't know if you'd be able to see anything. You're probably in the best spot right now as it is. And plus, I'd probably get in the way. Just gotta get this. 
There we go, we got them. <laughs> and then after we do that, I don't know how thick I want these. I wish I could throw the old rubber back in there and get it to work, but I don't think that would work. I feel like it would fall through, which is not what I want. It need to be, and actually, that looks just about, that might be thick enough if I include the other thing that's still there. Let's try that and let's just see what happens with it. I don't know, maybe it'll end up working. There we go. <laughs> that poked out too far if you ask me. <laughs> We should be all set and ready to go. I actually do want it to be as tight as I can get it. on my T16 and it did pretty well. it flops around or even if it fixed it I hope that filter went in and it went into place seems like it did I completely forgot that it was in there This side might be a little bit lower than this side, but I guess that's fine. That shouldn't upset it too much. If it gives it any fits, I'll fix it later. Let's see how much that engine bounces, if it bounces around anymore. Ready? smoother than it was earlier. Variator and I want to feel how the tractor drives and if it drives any better now since that rubber's fixed.
So as you guys saw, the variator didn't quite work well even after I adjusted it. It still stopped when I had the variator back all the way. The reason that that would happen is because your belts are old. If it does that, that means you need new belts or there's something wrong with your variator. But I know in this situation there is nothing wrong with my variator because as you guys saw, I just replaced it, I think in either this video or the last video. So there shouldn't be an issue with that at all. As for the belt issue, I think it's just those belts. I do know those belts are old. So I'm gonna throw the front belt back on it that Shane had on there originally, and I wanna see if that makes any difference. And if it drives good with that belt on there, I'm gonna throw the other belt back on it. I'm gonna do the belts off camera, just because I know for a fact that I have filmed putting belts on a tractor before. If you are not sure how to put a belt on, you can go back and look. I made a video on my 216 showing how to do it. And so yeah, there you go. I'll be back. Well guys, after sitting down and thinking about it, I decided I'm just gonna leave these belts on here. These belts work just fine. They move the tractor like they need to, so I'm not too terribly worried about it right now. Plus, it's a pain in the ass to get that drive pulley off the transmission, so I'm just gonna leave the two belts on there. I wanna thank everybody for watching today's video. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the way that I go by. Uh, those belts that are on there right now work just fine. If, like I said before, if I end up needing to, I'll go on ahead and replace the belts. But right now, I'm just going to leave them alone. I will be keeping those belts, though. I do have them setting in a certain spot where they'll stay safe. And they are together, so I won't lose them. So, yeah. I want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this is, I think, going to be the end of the 214 saga. Uh, coming up next, I think our next little project is going to be that home light t10 that i picked up so yeah i want to thank everybody for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe if this is your first time checking out my channel please consider hitting that subscribe button it tells youtube that i do a good job at making these videos and people actually like watching them it also tells me that you guys like what you see and you want me to make more videos so Definitely not that you guys definitely don't want the second option, but I would like for YouTube to know that people do like these videos. Maybe they'll start recommending more, recommending them more instead of trying to shadow ban me. <laughs> so yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Leave your stories down below if you get a 214 or you get a 200 series John Deere or you get any garden tractor out there. Uh, leave your story down below. I do read them and I do comment to them. I really like sitting down and uh, listening to people's stories, them telling me about their tractors they have. I've had people tell me about their 316, their uh, round fender, their 140. So yeah, I do like to sit down and I do like to read them. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. I guess this is going to be it for now on this tractor. So yeah, take care. Bye.